And I had a dream. And God reminded me of all the miracles. Not all of them because I was slept for a few years. But as many as he could remind me of in that short period of time, he reminded me story after story after story after story. All the miracles God had done for us over the years. We've been married 33 years, so there's plenty of opportunity for God to work in your life. It's our anniversary. Yes. Woohoo. Anyway, um, 30 years, 33 years. Anyway, so God reminded me. I was like, that's all I dreamed was one story after another. And the next morning I woke up and Dwight had been sitting there reading his Bible and Praying for everybody. My husband prays for all y'all by name, by the way, on all of your children as well. So um, he gets, I get out and I go in the kitchen, you know, to give him his coffee, blah, blah, blah. And Dwight is down in the pit. I said, you know what, Dwight? And I'm going to do it exactly like I did it at home. I got up from my chair, my couch, and I went where I had lots of room. And I said, I refuse to believe that God has forsaken us. I refuse to believe that lie. God has never forsaken us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He will always provide for us. He'll deliver us. It doesn't matter that it's our fault. God is faithful. He's proven it to me over and over and over and over and over and over again. So I can trust Him. I can trust Him with the great big mountains in my life because I face the little ant hills. Amen. You know what God wants us to do? Go kick those ant hills down. Start living like a king's kid. Get that word of God in you. Soak it up. Drink it up. Swallow it whole. Eat the words. Amen. Because it is life. It is breath. It is meat. It is what is going to keep you alive when all hell comes to breakfast. And it will. Believe me. You're, there are no free rides in this world. Satan hates every one of you. He's got your number. He knows what you he needs to do to destroy you is his is it betrayal he'll keep having people betray you is it abuse you want to know why women go from one abusive relationship to another because the devil's got their number listen you don't have to live a defeated life you can live above your circumstances no matter what anybody does to you do you think we have to be betrayed we can be Betrayal, betrayal, betrayal. You want to know how many people have stolen from us? Oh, we just got robbed again recently. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. The Bible says that Satan has returned seven times when he steals. I keep getting rich. You can't steal enough from me. Because every time that he steals from me, I get seven times more. Woohoo! The devil's defeated. I'm the winner. He's a loser. I know the end of the book. That's good. Christian, you get on an elevator and Steve's talking to everybody about the Lord, you know. 
And everywhere you go, he's talking about the Lord. And every opportunity, he's talking to everybody and everything that breathes. The penguins, he talks to the penguins about the Lord. So I have been there. I've seen it. So I wanted what he had, which was boldness. Well, I thought, you know, if I'm going to ask God for boldness, I'm not going to ask for a little dripper for it. Be careful what you ask for. So I asked for a double portion, a double anointing of what Steve Guyman had. You think I got it? <laughs> I got it. You know what? God wants you to be bold. Well, what good is it if you don't have a testimony? And without a test, there's no testimony. So every time you face a challenge, how are you going to handle it? Well, it was me. Oh my gosh, my world is falling apart. Well, guess what? You're going to eat your words. Because the Bible says that's exactly what happens. The fruit of your words, you will eat it. But when your trust is in the name of the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth, and His word says, I am your provider. I am your healer. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. I am your healer. I am the great physician. I am the good shepherd. I am your deliverer. I will deliver you out of this situation. Do you believe it? Do you believe the words that Jesus said? Everything He did, we will do. And even greater things than He did? Come on. Where, where is it? Why don't we see it in the church? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in our next few messages. And uh, the one we were supposed to do today was on I, what we believe is the number one cause. It's really just one cause <clears throat> in this big thing. And that is um, a flabby faith. The reason you don't experience God's victory in your life is because of flabby faith that is caused by the educated idiot box or what I call the paralysis of analysis. You know, if you don't use a leg, I, I had a, a, I'll give you a little bit of a little bit of a message and then we're going to close. Uh, I broke my leg many years ago. 29 years ago, I broke my leg skiing. And when I got my cast off after six weeks, my leg was skinny. My, I had an atrophy. You see, this is what I think happens a lot in our lives. Is that if you're going to walk a victorious life in Christ, you've got to walk. You've got to step out of the boat if you're going to walk in water, on water. Amen? The Bible says we're to walk in faith, not sit on our blessed assurance. Amen. Okay, we're to act upon the word. Amen. Because as a, here's the problem, see. God gives you a measure of faith, but it has to grow. So He gives you this faith of the seed of a mustard, a mustard seed. That teeny, weeny little thing, but it grows into a great big tree. If we don't water it and fertilize it with the Word, pouring our life, pouring that Word into us, you know what, guys? If you, do you have a hunger and thirst for God's Word? Because if you don't, there's something. The cares of this world have overtaken your heart. Right. Turn off the television. Amen. Tell, turn off. I, love, I, I appreciate Fox News bringing a little bit of truth. But get it off. If you don't have time for the Word of God in your life, you're never going to walk in victory. Because in order to walk in victory, you must walk in faith. Faith in what? God's Word. God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It is a, a walk. We, it's, you got to walk the walk. You know what the church, the people are out there have to think, hate about Christianity? We all talk the talk, but they don't see anybody walking the walk. Where, how do you behave in the workplace? How do you behave in your home? How do you behave when you go to a football game? How do you behave when you take your kids to a little league game? How do you behave in the world workplace? I'm telling you, are you walking the walk or is you just talking the talk? And I'm going to tell you, God wants you, to, wants to be able to do great, wonderful things through each and every one of us. He wants us to live like children of the great King. Amen. 
the great king, not king, king of England or king of that or king of that, uh, king of Obama. We want, we are kids of the king, the great king. Don't, don't kid yourself. We have a monarchy now. Say focus. Thank you. No, well, let's get it, get, get it right here. We have a king, and he's the king of all kings. He's over all the kings. So that's our father. We're his kids. We are members of his royal family. Amen. I want y'all to go home today, and I want you to start dwelling on this because what you dwell on will get planted in your heart, and it will change your life because what you believe in your heart determines how you're going to act. It determines how you're going to speak because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what you speak, you will have. I got on to myself. I got on to myself last night. Because for the last few days, every time somebody, I usually say, people say, how are you doing? I'm super blessed. I don't care what my day's going like. I'm super blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I got up this morning. I have legs that can walk, eyes that can see. I am super blessed. My mama and daddy are still here. I got a husband that loves me after 33 years and 30 pounds. It's good. Life is good. Amen. I got blessed. The last few days, people ask me, Connie, how are you doing? How's everything? I'm exhausted. i got to get on this Christian. I'm about to drop. I'm so exhausted. You only know what my day was like. It starts at 5.30 in the morning and never ends. It's just going, 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 going. The people that know me know that's true, but normally I have a lot of energy. And so I had to get on to myself. Self. That's right. Amen. Amen. You want to know why you're exhausted? Because that's what's coming out of your mouth. That's right. That's right. Have whatever you say. Exactly. There's life and death is in the power of the tongue. Blessing and curses is in the power of the tongue. That's right. What we say with our mouth is what we're going to get. So, ask me. Ask me. Ask me. How are you doing, Johnny? I'm awesome, man. I'm super blessed. Yes. Yes. Woo. Okay. Well, I want to be super blessed. I want to tell you, walk in the blessing real quick and we're going to close. Because if I don't shut up, we won't go eat. Amen. <coughs> Oops. I'm not supposed to say that word. My mother used to not say that word. Okay, so <clears throat> you want to be super blessed? Yeah. Okay, there's two walks. There's two roads you can walk on in this life. The blessing or the curse. Deuteronomy gave the children of Israel a choice. Moses, God spoke to, through Moses to his people and he said, I set before you life and death, blessing or the curse. And then he outlines what the blessing is, and you'll be blessed here, there, and everywhere. And here's the curse. You'll be cursed here, there, and everywhere. He said, I would, God says this, my will is that you choose life. That's a whole other message on our nation. But each one of us as individuals has to choose life for yourself. Your parents can't choose it for you. Kids. Did you know? Your parents can't choose it for you. You can't choose it for your husband. You can't choose it for your wife. You can't pick it, do it for your kids. Every human being has to come to the place where they choose life. Jesus is the author of life, and he's the door to life. He said, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. First step, have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Amen. Have you surrendered? We sang a song. If I surrender, will you make it all new? 